I'm Zoe from K Johnson Gee, one of the Zero Certified Advisors, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up expense claims in Zero. So first of all, I've just taken to the main screen of Zero, which is the dashboard you should see as soon as you log in. And to get to expense claims, you go into business and expense claims near the bottom. And if this is the first time that you have used expense claims, your screen is expected to look very similar to this. And to complete our first expense claim, which I'm going to do today, you just need to go to the right hand side of your screen and click on the green new expense button. And today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a fuel expense claim. So I spent £15 putting your description, where you spent this at, the date, which can be edited, the account, I'll put this to travel. So the account is your nominal code, so where you would track your expenditure. And here, the optional is tracking categories. So it may be that you don't use these and therefore this won't populate on your expense claim. Or it may be that you have different tracking categories. In the demo company which I'm using today, they're tracking by region, but it may be that you track by project or different ca tracking categories that you may use, different shops, different areas that you have. And therefore, if you do use tracking categories, you would know whether this is relevant to yourself. So I'm going to track this to our North region. And this section here, which is also optional, it may be that the expense claim that's being submitted actually needs to be assigned to a customer. So the expenditure was incurred on behalf of a customer. Maybe that you was on a job and you had to pick something up for a customer that they hadn't already completed for you. And therefore it needs directly reimbursing to yourself from the customer. So I will use this for today. So select any, and I'm saying that this customer is going to reimburse us and this cost needs therefore to be tracked against that customer. So the last section for us to complete is to upload the receipt. If you was using the mobile app, it would probably be a lot easier for you to upload your images rather than saving them to your file on your computer. So be aware that your screen would look different if you was using the Zero app. Just a quick note on the bottom here. This is your gross amount and also your VAT. So just ensure that you're completing this correct. So as I'm now completing the elements as if I was an employee, I'm going to submit this for approval. If I had any queries with this, or wasn't sure whether it needed recharging, assigning to a customer, or just wasn't quite sure on something, I could save it as a draft and query it with someone before submitting for approval. But I'm happy with this, so I'm therefore going to submit it. So now, as the approver, which may be a manager or you'll know yourself who's authorised to review the expenditure within your company, these steps that I'm now going to take it would be the steps of the reviewer. You can now see on the top here, in review, there was one outstanding. Maybe on your screen, once you get used to it, this this little rim, it just reminds you of how many you've got to review to keep you on track of your own expenses. So if I click on here, the reviewer would then have a check of the receipt, check whether they're happy that it's been completed correct by the employee, whether they use their own personal money and therefore it's reimbursable, and whether the employee is tracked to the correct nominal code because it might be likely that an employee isn't quite sure and therefore they might have made a mistake. So it is worth checking here and whether 
tracking categories that have been used, whether you do use them or not, and whether the correct one has been used. And this section here, which is where we've assigned it to a customer, it may be that they've not assigned it because they're not aware of your agreements with your customers. And therefore you would need to edit the spent claim and change this if it's correct or remove it if you don't believe it should be. And then say, and then if you're happy with it, you can then approve from here. Okay, so now this has been reviewed. If we just refresh my screen. You can now see two review has gone down to zero and to pay is now at one. This is just a handy list of a reminder of how many um, expense claims you've got to pay. And also you can use the all, which would be all of them, even if they've been paid. So to pay is quite useful if you need to see what's outstanding. So if you click on the little dots and the drop down, it may be that this has been approved and there's an error on it or it does in fact need to be assigned to that customer we've just removed. You can then edit from here or it may be that you've approved by accident. Don't be concerned because you can always go back on what you have done in zero and you can decline it and give your employee a little note to explain why this has been declined. From this drop down also, you can view the bill. So this is the invoice. And also if you click here, you can see the receipt. I just want to show you where else you can find this. So if you go to business and bills to pay, it may be a quicker option for you to look into the expenditure per employee. And you can do this by using the search function and there you can see that I have claimed 15 pounds for the um, fuel. Okay, so the next step that I want to show you is when an employee has access to a company credit card or another company account, it may be that their expense claim that they're submitting is just for your records and it does not actually need to be repaid, repaid to the employee. So to complete this, you need to go into accounting, advanced, you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can look at organize, organization settings. You just scroll down here on the right hand side, there's expense. And here's the expense settings. So it's likely that your page will look differently. This is just a demo company and it only has myself on it. Whereas it's likely you will have several users on your zero and the employees that are submitting the expense claims. So if I just click on myself, here I am saying that I have access to the business bank account. Again, it's likely that this screen will look different for yourself. It may have different company credit cards, a lot more company bank accounts, but please just ensure that you, you're ticking the correct box that this employee has access to. Okay, so now I'm going to submit another expense claim to show you the difference. Just as a reminder, business, expense claims, new expense claim. And again, I'll complete it for the £15 for the fuel. And here's the difference now that we've completed them settings on the employee. It's now asking me whether I spent the £15 out of company money and therefore non-reimbursable or whether it was my personal money and reimbursable. So it was on the company credit card that I have access to. In this case, it says business bank account, but it's likely in your circumstances that it's company credit cards that your employee has access to, and therefore this would be different. So I'll upload the image again. Checking that this is correct. 
where I spent it at. So this is the same as I did on the last expense claim. So change the date. And then the account again, going to travel. And this time it's the same region, but this is not being assigned to a customer. Show you the difference. Yep. And this can then again be submitted for approval. And just to show you the difference on the review page, the reviewer will click on this and they would see that they paid it from the company money from this bank account and therefore it does not need repaying to the employee. So you can approve this if you agree or you can decline and send a message to the employee as to why this has been declined. So I will approve it. Refresh my page again. You'll still see now that only one is to pay as this was the first expense claim, which was paid out of my own money. If you click on all, there's now two, as one does not need reimbursing. Just want to show you one last thing before we finish off today. So we go back into expense claims. I have just done a simple expense claim today. However, I wanted to show you sometimes a receipt or very often a receipt has different items on it. So we like to um, itemize your receipt. So for example, it may be that you have fuel on a receipt for 15 pounds. It can ask you whether you want to, it's asking the same categories as it did on the other one for each line. And then the second, I'm going to put some sundry items. We haven't got a sundry code, so let's just put it to so general expenditure and five pounds. Yep, so you can see that and ensure that your VAT is correct. I'm not going to complete the full expense claim, but I just wanted to show you that you can itemize an expense claim. So the full invoice amount does not need to go to the same code and therefore you can split your expense claim like I've just done there. So I hope you found today useful and expense claims can definitely help you keep track of your employee expenses and therefore it's very useful for you and your company and also for your employee to track whether there's any issues with their expense claims as they will have an expense claim screen also and if it's been declined they will know the reason why. It's a very good way of keeping track of receipts and as, as we know many expense claims can be lost or you're unsure whether they've been paid or not if you've not got a correct system and this one in zero is just really useful and really quick and easy and the review process is also really efficient so thank you